Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal, and this is another Expedition Log. Today marks the end of X-Log Phase 2. End, the end of the 2018 Gulf Mall Tour. Today we'll be visiting a mall that I was able to catch in its last stage of vitality, when stores were still open and shoppers were spending money. Despite the many scars lining the corridors and concourses of this mall, such as holes in the ceiling, and a still running fountain lined with algae and gross green junk, the mall was still alive when I saw it. Today, it's not. But I would like to show you how it used to be, at least in 2018. So let's bring Phase 2 of the Expedition Log series to an end in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Come take a walk with me and my dad, Captain Sal Sr., in the Cortana Mall in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But first, a word from our sponsor. Price LeBlanc, selling any truck you'll take. Literally anyone, he'll sell you whatever you're willing to buy. And my dad, Captain Sal Sr., sampling just what Price LeBlanc's trucks are capable of. It's pretty impressive. Enjoy. Elizabeth got her trucks in a row. Don't we? Yes, sir. Just got back from a fine quail hunt in Georgia and bagged a lot of quail and had a lot of fun. Price LeBlanc, your number one horse, refuses to jack your Toyota list price to the high heaven and then feed you a few crumbs while dropping you like a hot potato. Let's pull a pin on the competition and blast them away! Push, pull, or tag! Happen to be alive at your action Toyota dealer. We're loaded with tucks! This place is jumping. The pressure cooker is exploding. We will never insult your intelligence at Price LeBlanc Toyota. They got the country boy up against the wall. Loose as a goose sail. When you are hot, you're hot. Now this is strong as garlic. Chucks, chucks, cars and chucks. We're not made out of money. Darling, talk, talk, We're talk. loaded with chucks. We're loaded with chucks. Chucks, chucks, cars and chucks. Chucks, cars and chucks. Chucks, cars and chucks. Yes, sir. And had a lot of fun. Okay, we're done. Yes, sir. Price of all your number one horse refuses to jack your Toyota list price to the high heaven and then feed you a few crumbs while dropping you like a hot potato. Back in the 1960s, the East Baton Rouge Parish in Louisiana had the Bon Marche Mall, which was opened as an open-air mall in 1960 and still exists today, but repurposed as a technology business park. The local Baton Rouge community was opposed to the idea of any new mall due to the restrictive nature of proposed traffic redesigns, but mostly because they had been noticing sharply deteriorating sales in downtown stores and they wanted to revitalize the central business district area. In 1963, Metropolitan Baton Rouge, $84.9 million worth of goods were sold. 20.8% of this was sold in downtown shops. By 1972, 236 million in goods were sold, but only 6.1% of that were sold from the Central Business District downtown. Tests were even run in the downtown area to close off the streets near shops just to see if people were drawn in without the noise and commotion of traffic to make it a more safe and easy to shop area. These tests failed miserably and the community hated it and a shiny new mall got the green light for construction. Now, 
The mall would be built on a 103-acre tract of land that was previously the Cortana Plantation. Back in 1856, the old sugar harvesting Cortana Plantation was acquired by James A. McGatton under foreclosure for $90,000 at a sheriff's sale. The new mall was owned and managed by New York-based Mall Properties, Inc., who hired the Milton J. Womack Company for construction. Ground was broken and construction began in 1974. The folks over at the Bon Marche Mall, they got nervous when construction began, and they converted their mall to being closed in the same year to try and compete with the shiny new mall. On February 11, 1976, a 120,000 square foot Godshaw's department store opened. And then on August 4th, 1976, the dedication ceremony and grand opening was held for the Cortana Mall to which the Godshaws was attached. The original anchors for the mall were the Godshaws, Wilson's Catalog Showroom by H.J. Wilson Company, Sears, JCPenney, and Dillard's. The mall would receive its first renovation and expansion five years after the mall opened in 1981. The Godshaws received a second level, and one year later, the chain merged with the Maison Blanche department store chain of New Orleans, thereby co-branding the store as Godshaws Maison Blanche by 1982. 1985 saw the Wilson's Catalog showroom transform into service merchandise, and two years later, the Cortana Mall got a second expansion. Mervyn's was added as the sixth senior anchor, and a seven-store concourse was added to the mall, with its formal dedication on July 12, 1987, bringing the Cortana Mall to 1.6 million square feet of commerce. In the 1980s, the Cortana Mall was the place to be in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Six healthy anchors with hundreds of places to shop. Kids were running around the mall buzzing with excitement in 1989 with the release of Nintendo's Game Boy, intoxicated by the thought of having just seen the newly released Batman with Michael Keaton. He's one of the top three Batman actors for me. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was in theaters, along with Back to the Future Part II, The Little Mermaid, Ghostbusters 2, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Music from not only these movies were dancing in people's minds, but from popular musicians of the time, such as Duran Duran, The Bangles, Depeche Mode, R.E.M., and New Kids on the Block. The move into the 90s brought some amazing changes, and some challenges for America. The Hubble Telescope launched and began its mission in 1990, and Tim Berners-Lee published his formal proposal for the World Wide Web, with the first web page being written shortly thereafter. Home Alone, Edward Scissorhands, and The Godfather Part 3 came out in 1990 as well. By 1991, the internet was made available for unrestricted commercial use with over 1 million users in the first year, and Queen frontman and singer Freddie Mercury issued a public statement confirming his affliction with AIDS, and he died one day after the announcement. By 1997, we were at the end of Bill Clinton's first presidential term. Princess Diana and Mother Teresa had both died. Mike Tyson bit Evander Holyfield's ear off in a match. The Woolworths chain shuddered after 100 years. Dolly the Sheep was the first cloned mammal. Steve Jobs returned to run Apple. And J.K. Rowling published the first Harry Potter book. In theaters, we had the premieres of Titanic, Men in Black, Batman and Robin, arguably the worst Batman movie, and Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. 1997 was a year of change across the world, and it was felt in Baton Rouge, too. 
The Cortana Mall was formally rebranded to the Mall at Cortana in an effort to offset the decline in business after two new malls opened within direct proximity to Cortana. The Mall of Louisiana opened less than six miles away, and Town Center at Cedar Lodge opened less than three miles away. In 1998, Maison Blanche was purchased by mercantile stores who owned Dillard's. The Dillard's at Cortana Mall moved from its original location into the space formerly occupied by the Maison Blanche Godshaws, and the old Dillard's space was filled with a new department store called The Parisian. It wasn't new, but it was new at Cortana. This store lasted one year, and by 1999, The Parisian was replaced with a McRae's department store. Thankfully, and against all odds, the Cortana Mall survived Y2K, and the early aughts had little effect on the mall. McRae's wouldn't go defunct until March 8, 2006. However, most of them were converted to Belk stores. But the Cortana McRae's was converted to a Foley's on March 28, 2001. Service merchandise closed in 2002, and the building sat vacant for two years until it was reoccupied by a Stephen Barry's discounted clothing store in 2004. By September 9, 2006, the Foley's nameplate was retired and the company was dissolved into Macy's South, formally rebranding the Cortana location into a Macy's. Mervyn's would also close their Cortana location in 2006, and it has been abandoned ever since. In an effort to shift the local perception of the mall at Cortana, the owners decided to revert the name back to Cortana Mall in March 2009. With this change, many new stores would be opened across the mall as part of the rebranding festivities, and the owners pushed for a strong feeling of positive forward motion for the mall. Dillard's renovated their store and shuttered the second floor, converting it to a single floor clearance center as part of the 2009 renovations. Stephen Barry's would also shutter this year, just after the rebranding. This really doesn't sound like much forward momentum to me. However, a campus for the Virginia College, which is a college based out of Birmingham, Alabama, opened in the vacancy left by Stephen Barry's, which was originally the Wilson's catalog showroom. So as we make this turn up here, we're coming up on the amazing array of fountains at the Cortana Mall, and they were still on. Well, some of them were still on. Some of them were off, but they had standing water. But we're going to run back to this corner here, and we're going to look back in this service corridor, just because I get curious and I like to see these things. There's a first glimpse. We're going to come back and take a look at more of these, and you'll see some up-close shots of the standing water with all the algae and who knows what's in that water. It's pretty disgusting.
As I was walking around back in this corridor, I saw a couple of things that were a little suspect. The first thing that I saw was this shopping cart that had a bunch of jargon on it, and it just looked like it looked like somebody's mobile armoire or like their closet on wheels. And I kind of suspected that down at the end of this hallway, there might have been somebody there. So I didn't want to put my dad in risk because he probably would have came back there looking for me. So I just decided to FO and get out of there. There he is, by the way. He disappears behind that pillar. Spooky. So here we are. These are the amazing fountains at the Cortana Mall. Take a look at this. Just take it all in. It smelled as bad as it looks. I can't state strongly enough how bad the odor in this part of the mall was. The standing water was mostly horrid. But even the running water was just disgusting. And I was pretty surprised that they actually still had it on. Look at this. How is that not a health code violation to have the standing water? And there were mosquitoes flying around. So if you see my motion jerking, it's because I was avoiding mosquitoes and swatting them away. That's how bad this was. The original owners of Cortana Mall, New York City's Mall Properties, Inc., were facing foreclosure on the property, and by April 2011, they relinquished the mall back to their lender. The Woodmont Company was brought in for receivership to manage and lease the property. And in March 2013, Las Vegas-based Moonbeam Capital Investments, LLC, purchased the mall, and they retained Woodmont to manage. Moonbeam paid $6.15 million for the mall and the Mervins, which was one of seven underperforming malls that they purchased in 2013. One of the other malls that they purchased during this acquisition period was the Burlington Center Mall in New Jersey, with the famous elephant statue named the Waterhole, and the elephant's name is Petal. Moonbeam paid $4 million bucks for the Burlington Center Mall. I actually have a video out for Burlington, which I published last February in 2018, but I was recently allowed full access inside the mall after it was abandoned, and I'll be releasing that incredible, incredible footage in the Burlington sequel in the beginning of X-Log Phase 3. Cortana Mall is the end of X-Log Phase 2, and X-Log Phase 3 kicks off right after this and the next director's update, which you don't want to miss. Lots of really great teasers, reflections, and updates will be included in that director's update, along with some footage that you'll only get to see within that update. So make sure you sub and ring the bell and keep an eye out for that.
And here we have my dad taking the mall massage chair challenge. You'll have to check out the Discord for full details on that. The link for the Dead Malls of Discord server is in my description below. It's a really fun place and we're about to get a thousand members, so make sure you join. And if you're one of my patrons, you get special access to a special room where it's just me and you guys. In January of 2016, Macy's Inc. announced that 40 locations would be closed across the country, and by March of that year, the Cortana Mall location was shuttered. Then one year later, the mall would suffer its worst loss yet. In 2017, Cortana Mall would lose both the JCPenney and Sears, with both being closed by June of 2017. Moonbeam prides themselves on reviving failing shopping centers, being able to pull them out of the mire and make the most pitiful mall thrive. But they just couldn't pull this one off. Just after the Sears and JCPenney closed, in August of 2017, Moonbeam would place the ailing mall on the market for an asking price of 4 million bucks, only to take the listing down shortly thereafter as there was virtually no interest. By December of 2017, Dillard sealed the mall access to their clearance center, only allowing shoppers in through the front parking lot entrance. By April of 2018, the mall only had 40 inline tenants left, and in September of 2018, Virginia College announced that the Cortana Mall campus would be closing. As of right now, when I'm recording these words for you, in May of 2019, the campus for Virginia College is closed, leaving the mall with only the Dillard's Clearance Center as the sole anchor, and a reported occupancy of, get this, five stores. Five inline tenants are open at this mall. And I actually did call the management office to see if they were even still open, and she said, yeah, come on down. We got plenty of stores open. But people on foot have confirmed that there's only about five stores left. Overall, I was incredibly impressed with the upkeep of this mall. Despite its ceiling holes and the murky water in the fountain area, the mall had its array of problems. But overall, the floors were pretty clean, and it seems like the place was kept up pretty well for what it is. Now, as we walk towards this entrance, we're going to actually leave. And my dad and I decided to go to the Dillard's, but we knew that you couldn't get into there from inside the mall, so we had to go hunting around. Luckily, security was no issue when we were there. The mall felt incredibly safe, and I, I had no problems. So good on you, Baton Rouge. So here we go. We're going to go outside and start our trek to Dillard's. Alright, we gotta go into Dillard's, we gotta walk around. There's a car. I don't know, let's go. My dad's such a trooper. I love that man. Captain Sal, there he is. We spotted what I think is the abandoned Mervyn's but it might be the JCPenney. My gut says Mervyn's, and the label scar that you'll see after we come out screams Mervyn's, but let me know in the comments if you know what this was. 
just in an effort to see what the inside of this place looked like, we walked in the place and just started inquiring about how to go about making donations and just asking for more information. There wasn't much to see. Yeah, do you have any um, documentation on donations? Any documentation on donations? Lady in the pink? Perfect, thank you, sir. Properly, what do I have to fill out paperwork to do it or anything, or just drop off? Uh, you can just drop off. Just drop it off? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just do that. Is there any one particular items, any class of items you need more than others? Um, in particular... And after just a brief conversation with the super nice people within the donation drop-off, we had to leave because we felt the heat. Right, and it was time to go. We'll come back, yep. But look how cool those lights are. Super, super cool. And you couldn't get upstairs... It was actually blocked off. There, there wasn't just a tarp in front of those escalators. It was blocked off at the top. Even if I tried to go up those escalators, I couldn't have showed you anything. Probably should have tried the elevator. Oh well. <laughs> what was that, though? I wonder what that was. It was a... Try to open it. Go try to open it. Try to open it. So here we are going into the Dillard's, and this is a Dillard's clearance center. And the second floor is closed off, so we couldn't get up there. We did look, but there was only one door open, and it was the front. They locked this place down tight because there's so much merchandise inside. It's like a sea of clearance goods. So we got in, and we just wanted to take a quick look around. And immediately our first thought was, let's go up those escalators and see what it looks like upstairs. Because you could actually look out through the window and see the mall from inside. But alas, we couldn't. Everything was blocked off and people were staring at us the entire time. So we're just going to get a brief look inside the Dillard's Clearance Center. And then we'll get back into the mall for one last look. The Cortana Mall is dead. And the footage you're seeing is probably the last look that we'll get of this awesome, awesome mall in full holiday regalia with a survivable occupancy rate. But as I explore more of these pale shrines to the glory days of retail and commerce, I see more that cling on to life right up until the bitter end. They remain open with sometimes just one store leasing space and management will even decorate for the holidays. It's beautiful, but bittersweet, because nobody's there to enjoy this. Most of the time, they'll only shutter the mall when either the city or state steps in for health code or structural violations, or if a water main breaks or someone gets hurt. I've seen malls with just one store open that stayed open with that one store open, closed for those reasons. I'm looking at you Burlington Center Mall and Century 3, two other moonbeam failures that only shuttered after catastrophic and multiple water main breaks within the mall despite years of health code violations and failing structural integrity. It took the press getting wind of somebody getting hurt after a water main break for moonbeam to actually shutter that place. To Steve Maxson, founder and CEO of Moonbeam, and Shaul Pryor, chief operating officer of Moonbeam. The two of you should be ashamed of yourselves. The way you run your company is disgusting. This parking lot is pretty much on par with what I expect a parking lot to look like at a mall owned by Moonbeam. And if you guys know what this building was, and I think it might have been a bank, let me know down in the comments. 
but there was a stench that smelled like something died there, and it was only at that building, so something may have been decomposing inside there. I have a ton more content coming on the way, and as this marks the end of phase two, phase three will kick off with a bang, and possibly breaking 20,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for all of the engagement, and I appreciate every bit of it. Tire Town Cortana, check that out. Cubicles and everything. I have dozens of amazing places to show you coming up. Malls, abandoned places, amazing structures, cities, sites, everything. So please stay tuned and watch out for my updates on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, nice. and Discord. And the links are below in the description for all of those. I'd like to thank my patrons who directly support my channel and fill my tank with gas and my body with caffeine on all of these expeditions. If all of you were to donate a dollar per month, I could do this full time. What do you think? To my subscribers and the Dead Malls of Discord best. family who always push me to be better, and last but not least, you, who stumbled on my channel randomly but decided to stay till the end. I love all of you. Thank you guys so much. All of you rock. As always, it was a pleasure taking you for a walk and a talk. My name is Sal, and I'll see you guys next in Phase 3 of the Expedition Log series. Take care, guys, and have a fantastic day.